Hits. Welcome back to the Conscience of Kansas with Paul A. Ibbotson on the Wildcat 91.9. Ladies and gentlemen, our first guest is the uh, the publisher and the editor of one of the premier conservative websites in the country, in American Thinker. And Thomas Lifson, we'd like to welcome you to the Conscience of Kansas radio program. Thank you very much. Well, you know, it's our pleasure to have you on the program. I've been looking at... Uh, you know, what's interesting when you go to American Thinker, right off the bat, you see this uh, Americanized version of uh, Rodin's depiction of Dante based on the Dante's Divine Comedy. And I keep thinking to myself, now, these folks may be pretty deep, you know, over here at American <laughs> Thinker. And uh, what's sort of the motivation behind that? And what kind of got you involved in making a, a website such as American Thinker? Well, you asked some very good questions, Paul. Um the uh, the logo just kind of occurred to me as I was thinking over the course of a year uh, about how to go about building something on the web. I, uh, like many of us, I became fascinated by the internet uh, in its early years and uh, participated in it uh, uh, even from the day before uh, Windows. I was on DOS based um, uh, groups uh, on on the web. Uh, communicating with people about politics and other things and as the web developed uh, we saw the <clears throat> emergence of uh, blogs of various sorts which you know I, I would define a blog as uh, the thoughts of someone or sometimes a group of people uh, on the day's passing events and the best of them are absolutely terrific places like Powerline which became uh, famous for its role in debunking the um, memo um, that's called Rathergate, where mm -hmm. uh, Dan Rather on 60 Minutes uh, claimed to have a, a memo uh, that was easily debunked as uh, something produced on a word processing device uh, from uh, George Bush's uh, time in the uh, uh, reserves in, in, in Texas, in the yes. Air Force Reserve. Um, anyways, uh, so I, I, I started thinking, what, what could one do? And... Uh, uh, as as often is the case, uh, I, I took my time looking at it from various angles and came up with the idea of American Thinker, which is not a blog, and it's not quite like, uh, oh, some of the sites, uh, po politics aside, say National Review or um, uh, many of the other uh, political sites out there. I wanted a place that people from outside the mainstream of journalism or the political elite, but smart people with a lot to say uh, could find a forum and uh, designed it to appeal to people um, on the basis of thinking. Uh, that's really what we stand for as opposed to feeling um, and to present good thoughts, serious thoughts, uh, present them honestly and uh, see if the world is interested. <laughs> well, we I began that five years ago. And you've been very successful. Obviously, uh, folks can find American Thinker at www.americanthinker.com. Now, uh, the success I, I see in one way is is all the influential people that cite to American Thinker on a weekly basis. It's uh, it's very common to see Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hattie, and many, many of the uh, uh, very uh, popular uh, people really citing back to American Thinker, but also the amount of readership. And it seems to me that you're very selective – on the number of publications that you put out a week and that you're you know looking for quality and uh, it seems to go back you know you have a very interesting thomas bio itself i've been looking at it and when i was conversing with you uh, by email telling you a little bit about myself i was explaining my background when i got to my sociological background i started tempering that because i usually have to temper that with conservatives because usually when i say well i'm a i'm a sociologist or my phd is in sociology most people are seeing the the bat symbol outside their window you know danger warning and uh but you have a sociological background a very interesting academic background could you real quickly tell just a little bit of that interesting story of your own to our well, listeners? Okay, well, the, the quick and easy way to say is that for about a decade I was called by my friends, a graduate student with tenure at, uh, at Harvard. I, I spent a lot of time, I spent almost two decades there, uh, got three degrees in three different fields, 
and ended up teaching all three fields, one of which was sociology, which is my doctorate. Mm -hmm. uh, but I became fascinated. This we're, we're talking about the period, the late 1960s and through the 1970s and then mid 80s, um, when uh, uh, I. I, I had a chance as a as a young man to spend a year at a Japanese university, and I became just utterly fascinated with uh, Japan in the mid to late '60s, uh, and began studying it from uh, all the angles that could help explain why it worked as it did, and uh, um, how what what one can learn about a society so different, so successful along so many dimensions, so well organized, and and uh, and so on, and yet founded on a very different uh, spiritual, metaphysical, uh, moral, and uh, ethnic, obviously, cultural foundations than anything in the West. I mean, just truly a non-Western society that was easy, uh, as well adapted to modernity as anything in the West. So I, I began studying that as an academic, and uh, one thing led to another, and if you're going to understand uh, a society, you probably ought to do some sociology, but if, like, as I did, became uh, interested in, in business and how it was that uh, they were able to sustain economic growth and uh, have companies uh, achieve such great success in such large numbers and so on and so forth, lots of interesting questions there, I ended up studying business and um, found that I, I absolutely... I uh, am fascinated by business in general. That's been a, a current of my life ever since. Uh, so I became an academic, uh, and as I say, I taught in all three fields, uh, Asian studies, uh, sociology, and uh, primarily, actually, at Harvard Business School. Um, but found eventually that academic life wasn't exactly what I had in mind. Uh, I'm more of a doer and <laughs> yeah. uh, been a consultant for the last couple of decades, and uh uh, really, 9/11 uh, forced me to think, uh, rethink my priorities, and it's in that uh, environment that I began thinking about the internet and what one could do to uh, use its capabilities uh, to good end, to advance uh, the national conversation on the important issues of the day. Well, that's very interesting, and myself, along with a lot of other people, have also been impacted by 9/11. And, uh, you know, it, it, sort of a reevaluation point uh, for myself in, in looking at, am I doing as much as I can with my life? And you see the, the preciousness of life when you see catastrophes happen in your own country that uh, we don't historically have to take place. And uh, so it's made a lot of difference in my life, actually propelled me into academia and away from law enforcement. I was a chief of police and uh, doing drug task force work and uh, enjoyed that as well. And then academia retaught me again. And so, you know, there's a lot of wonderful things about academia, a lot of wonderful things about learning. We have thousands upon thousands of, of Kansas State Wildcats that'll be listening to us now, as well as <laughs> other people. And so, you know, I, I say that there are good and bad things about academia. And well, yeah, and, and you moved from a, 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 a position, a, a, a function in, in criminal justice Mm -hmm. That puts you in touch with real life. You're grounded in real life. The problem, my problems with academia are when it loses touch with real life, when it mm -hmm. enters the idea of the mind and never comes back. Uh, the life of the mind is a wonderful thing, but you need to have it balanced with uh, firm grounding in the, in, the, uh, in the verities, the eternal verities of human nature and life and so on and so forth. And wonderful as campuses are, and uh, I spent, you know, the first... Yeah. Uh, four decades of my my career on uh, on, on campuses, but uh, they do have a, uh, a a character that is insulated from the cares of ordinary life, and that that's that's a drug that's best taken in moderation. <laughs> I think that's well said and and eloquently said.